Okay. I'm sure I got the agenda. Good to go. All right. Good evening, everybody. It's Tuesday, March 22nd, 2022. It's the Abington Conservation Meeting. First item of new business is SE084-0549, continued hearing, notice of intent filed by Rick Montgomery to construct a single family dwelling construction including driveway, grading, landscaping, and utilities within the 100 foot buffer zone at 75 Dale Street. We received an email yesterday or today asking for a continuance. So, someone want to make a motion to continue to the April 12th meeting? I'll make a motion to continue it. We have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next on the agenda is SE084-0553, continued hearing, notice of intent filed by Dan Mento, Mento Corp, for the construction of duplex structure, utilities, and parking area at 154 Brockton Ave. We received an email today from the attorney asking for continuance to the April 12th meeting for this project as well. Motion to continue until August, April 12th. We have a second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next up is SE084-0554, notice of intent from the Central Street Bridge, filed by the Abington DPW to improve the superstructure and traffic safety features. Work involves removing and creating concrete beams, installing a concrete deck on the bridge and concrete slabs on the sidewalks, and installing moment slabs, the guard rails to be replaced, and a new bridge rail, and ornamental rail will be installed. Hey, floor is yours. Name, name uh, and address, please. Uh, Bob Nikolai, uh, no address within Abington. I'm at 35 Tennyson Road in Reading. Uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, the town, uh, the highway department, and the DPW to present the project. Uh, what company are you with? Oh, TEC. Uh, my name is Bob Nikolai. Uh, so, to give a little background on this project, uh, this is a bridge that's uh, town-owned. Uh, it's fallen into a state of disrepair because of uh, leak, leaky water, uh, leaking joints at the curb lines on both sides of the bridge. Uh, if anyone's driven out to the bridge lately, you'll see cones set up on one of the shoulders. That's one of the areas of the worst degradation on the bridge. Um, the, the leaky water has gone through there, caused spalling of the concrete, uh, deterioration of the pre-stressed tendons in that beam, uh, which is why those guards were installed to try to push traffic as far off that bad spot as they could. Uh, this is a bridge that's being inspected by MassDOT um, more than they typically inspect a bridge. A typical bridge inspection cycle is two years. This one they're looking at at about every six months because of how bad it's gotten. Uh, they call it critical, uh, using their uh, terminology, it's considered critical. It's something that they've identified as a potential for a closure of the bridge if, if things aren't repaired soon. Uh, at that point, the town of Abington, um, this was about a year ago, reached out to my firm to have us start looking at a replacement for the bridge. Um, so what we did was we started with an alternatives analysis. We looked at three different alternatives, uh, spot repairs, a superstructure replacement, and a full replacement. Uh, the spot repairs on a, on a beam like this are kind of undoable. It, it doesn't really buy you much. Once the corrosion gets to those pre-stressed tendons, it's, it's really tough to rehabilitate a structure. So that wasn't, that alternative was kind of pushed aside. Uh, the third alternative, a full replacement, you'd be looking at much more impacts, control of water, driving sheeting into the river, um, dewatering, pumping, um, and a lot more cost for the town. Uh, where really the, the problematic spot is the beams. So what we decided on was a superstructure replacement. So essentially what we're gonna do is those walls on either side of the uh, river there are going to stay in place. We're simply going to pull the beams and the deck 
and the railing off and replace it with something very similar. Um, roughly the same geometry, not raising the roadway, lowering the roadway. Um, so it's all going to tie in nicely at each end. Um, new traffic safety features um, that are uh, crash tested, unlike the railing that's out there today. Um, and uh, no change in drainage patterns is part of this work. Uh, so it's a pretty limited project. Uh, there will be floats in the water uh, to allow them, the contractor to work underneath. Uh, there's one section of one of the abutment walls where there's a little bit of cracking, it's ball concrete. So the contractor will need to get in there, do some light chipping and mortaring of that face just to make sure that the degradation doesn't continue. Um, the, during construction, there'll be compost filter tubes around the site uh, and uh, silt sacks in both the adjacent catch basins. Um, no permanent impacts to any resource areas, and the only temporary impacts would be the floats in the water. Uh, there'll be a floating silt fence at the pond side to catch any debris that were to fall in. So um, that's a general overview of the project. And if there are any questions? Take those. I'll open it up to the board. One of the questions I had was the proposed time to start this project because of it's a it's an area where there is a lot of wildlife mm -hmm. and it is a nesting area. Mm -hmm. So, um, so right now we're because of the extent of the work, we're looking at about an 18 week construction duration, um, and because of uh, material shortages right now and lead times. We're definitely looking at next season, potential April start. So not April 2022, April 2023. Isn't that when migratory birds are coming north and they're starting to do all their nesting? I'm just throwing it out. <laughs> I mean, if anybody knows anything about Island Grove and the bridge, um, mm -hmm. it's notorious for ducks and geese and swans and swans. Okay. Uh, 18 weeks, sorry, I'm trying to do math in my head, about five months. Okay. Uh, we could start it potentially, you know, you want to get everything done by about November 15th. True, true, but I'm so saying you you could. Know, spring is usually the time for, for the nesting and everything, so. Yeah, I, mean, I think. have we, a couple of broods, I guess, but. Uh, yeah, that's something we want to put into the order of conditions. I don't see a problem with that back, working backwards from that November 15th date, assuming, call it six months. So that material that's going to be floated underneath the bridge for whatever it is, that's going to catch the debris as well? Yes. And that's going to be monitored daily? Yes. Okay. Answer my question. Anyone else? Open it up to the public. Anybody? Good. I was just going to say um, I'm a very, very critical person, as <laughs> many probably know. And I have to say, this was the nicest <laughs> Thank I've you. Seen <laughs> ever. It, Thank everything you. was laid out. There was like, <laughs> it was very thorough, and I do appreciate that. No problem. We like to go one and done yeah. with it. We don't have to like, keep wasting your time and coming back with. I mean, I, I look very carefully for, the, the only thing I could find is that there was a mention of certified vernal pools, but per the town bylaws, any vernal pool. So that has nothing to do with here, because I know there's no <laughs> vernal pools in this area. But just for, if you ever come for us in the future, right. it's one of the things that won't make my hackles. <laughs> <laughs> vernal pools, I'm circling it twice, all right. Potential. 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 Not, it doesn't have to be certified. So anyway. Got it. But yeah, yeah. And can somebody give me the pronunciation of this river? <laughs> Shoot a Matuska can. Shoot a Say you. it three times fast. <laughs> no. <laughs> I learned that from Doug Alwick. <laughs> Shoot a Matuska can. Shoot a Matuska can. Got it. Uh, any more questions from the board? Someone would like to make a motion? doesn't have a DEP file number, so yes, do we have does. to continue? It does. No, it does. Okay, so yeah, it's on the agenda. Why. 
Uh, we didn't get it until oh, okay. I think right here. this week okay. or a week okay. ago, maybe. All right, cool. All right, thank you. SE 084 0554. Right. Yes. So, I'd like to make a motion? To approve. To approve it. Is that the motion? motion? Someone's going to make the motion. <laughs> motion to accept the notice of intent for Central Street Bridge. SE 084-0554. Yes. Do I have a second? I'll, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All set. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to those who came out for the field walk. <laughs> that, it was cold that day. It was cold that day. <laughs> Doug, are you here for um, just Dale Street? I was going to be. It was continued. <laughs> Thank you. You can stay for the rest if you want. <laughs> I'm not throwing you out. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay. Huh? <laughs> All right, next on the agenda is abbreviated notice of resource delineation, uh, area delineation filed by Jim Lambert, WP East Acquisitions, LLC, located at Zero Summer Street. professional wetland scientist with Goddard Consulting here before you and Ann Rad to um, confirm the wetland resources on the site. Presently there is no uh, proposed work before the commission. We are just looking at the resources to confirm them. Um, there are three wetland areas on the site. I think I'm just going to can everybody hear me? Oh, yeah. Yes, I can. Sure. Okay. Um, there are three um, boring vegetated wetlands on the site. There's a um, wetland here, here, and here. So there's a uh, boring vegetated wetland here, here, and here. Um, as we know, um, boring vegetated wetlands are protected under the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act and local bylaws. And there's also a 100 foot buffer zone associated with the wetlands, and this is outlined in yellow. So the commission has jurisdiction over the wetlands and all the land within 100 feet of the wetlands, and that's outlined in yellow. So from here to here, the, wetland ha the commission has jurisdiction over this land, and if the applicant wants to do any work within this area, we have to come before the commission and of course ask um, permission to do work with a notice of intent. So we are here before you today um, asking for confirmation of the, res of the resource areas. I'm not sure if the commission or uh, peer review has been out to the site to look at the wetlands and if not, 
That is fine. Um, if the commission wishes for us to attend uh, a site walk or to hire a peer review, we understand that. We are just opening a hearing right now and asking the commission to review what we've outlined on site and confirm the buttons as we have shown. Open up to the board. I'm going to make a recommendation that we hire a peer reviewer. Um, I would also agree with something like that only because of the fact that this is such a tight area and the areas delineated on this map. I also looked at the um, Town of Abington zoning map, which you can find under the inspectional services on the left-hand side. There's a menu. And on this map, it outlines this area as being a watershed area, as well as a floodplain and wetlands protection area, which is on our local zoning map. Okay. And I would feel more comfortable with someone who has the expertise in the area, um, particularly this time of year where we do have these indicated areas of wetlands, you know, there is a potential for, um, what's the word I want, I'm trying to think, um, vernal pools for mm -hmm. uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, frogs, there's wood frogs, there's peepers, there's, the area is notorious. Mm -hmm. Has anybody been out to the site? I've been by it, I've not walked on it. Um, I've driven down Monaghan Way, but I've not stepped on any property only because of the fact that we have been told over and over you do not access anybody's property unless you have permission. So. I think we met up there with a selectman about four years ago, but it was quite a while ago. Yeah, so any, I mean, four years ago, yeah. anything done then would be. Um, I also went back to when the um, old colony railroad decided to um, reinstate the train service to us, and they had a little summary on the Summer Street area. So I think that if we could get more information from the old colony when they looked at the area, they did summarize what Summer Street resource area looked like. Thank you. Hi, sir. Um, so I have questions that I think probably a peer reviewer could answer and could look at and be able to report back to, um, to you and discuss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any any other question? I know, Kathy, you're just getting, we're, we're, discuss, we're, we're discussing uh, Zero Summer Street right now. There's your microphone. Just give me a second. Okay. Okay. Um, I would agree. I think this is a complicated site because they're actually going to fill in, I think, 6,000 square feet. Oh, I haven't been told of the project. I just, I'm here oh, to do the end. Oh, I thought it was. No, 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 no. She no. She's, the well she's the wetland well well scientist. Well, from what I've seen of the plans for zoning, you're going to fill in a lot of land. Um, plus, I think the wetland's kind of funky out there. Yeah. I My other concern is that we're in the zone two mm -hmm. for our drinking water. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of requirements that come with that, including storm water. So, but the question I have about the consultant, and maybe you know, Paul, is zoning getting a stormwater consultant to review the stormwater? I. Or are we going to need to do that? It's all because it's not going to be going in front of planning board, and they usually handle stormwater. Yeah, I don't know how that works. But I'm not sure uh, either. Stormwater is a big deal here. Right because it's going into our zone two watershed. Correct. So there's a big, huge... You know if there's concern. been any discussion, Tony? I mean, I would assume, just like on another project, they'd probably ask, just kick it over to us like we're doing. Right, right, right. But 
I don't have the. Uh, it's a, a huge issue that I haven't. I've listened to the zoning, but I haven't heard about where where the stormwater is going. I'm assuming it's under the parking lots, but there's a lot of requirements. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's it's a typical thing that they do, except mm -hmm. in this case because it's in the zone two, there's more stormwater requirements for t solids removal and yep. retention basins, etc. So um, I really think a consultant at the moment for the ANMAD, we should definitely get somebody because I think we're going to set the stage for where the wetlands are. Mm -hmm. And then, but the next phase, we're going to see the notice of intent with everything on it. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, I think that consultant can help us in both places. Mm -hmm. But that, I, I'm only associate at this point. <laughs> So I can't vote, guys. But you also have 20 years experience on the board. So. <laughs> but <laughs> if you wanted my advice, that would be my advice. Yeah. Thank you. Um, one Any other, other question? Thing, oh, go ahead, one other thing I did read was that um, this area also is the beginning of the Taunton River watershed area. I forget where I read that, but I saw that. You're in, correct. Thank you. I know I read that, and um, when consulting some of the maps and everything. And the. The pond that's over at the roadway, yep. um, when I've seen, I looked at the old plans mm -hmm. that they did for the tea a while back. Oh, I just tried some of that. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, it connects, there's like a stream that can, it connects to, I think it connects to a more oh. intricate water right. system. Which is on, which is above this, right? Is, is the roadway going to stay right where it is, the road on there? And are they going to keep the culverts? I don't know if there's like a... There's like a drainage system along the road that's a culvert, which yep. I think is grassed, but I'm not sure. I haven't been out there in a while. So those may be wetlands. So, you know, that's just another sort of question I had. And it should be noted there's a 50-foot right-of-way on that property that it goes through our wetlands that are shown on that plan at the bottom of the plant. Oh, there's a 50 foot. I see it, the easement right, away, right yeah. here. So I'm not quite sure how that impacts things, but usually you have to leave it open. So that's a zoning problem, probably more than a conservation, but mm -hmm. just it was interesting because it's where the wetlands are that they, and they want to, on the plans they're showing, they're taking all of that wetland out, basically, that's on the roadway. So the, the amount of square footage of wetlands. Yeah, she, she doesn't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's they don't. All right. Yeah. So you're only doing the delineation. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Correct. That's okay. Oh, sorry. That's that's no, no problem. I, you know, hopefully you can bring that back. I understand. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Because our, our concerns are real and certainly not having to continue to design things and not taking some of our concerns into account is important. Yes, I understand. Right. Now Thank that we're you. moving into the warmer weather, we'll hear more chorusing from the wood frogs and everything else out there. Yeah, amphibians. Which I think is important because if there are plans, from what I've seen, what's going on out there now, filling in a bunch of these wetlands, um, and there's a proposal to, admit to replicate that, it's very hard to replicate wetlands. Mm -hmm. I know that really well. Um, if there, we don't know very much about this site. And one of the interests of the Wetlands Protection Act as well. Mm -hmm. So I would like to know um, not just peer review for the delineation, but potentially, depending on what's you know there, also having a wildlife biologist go out there and do a habitat survey okay. and see if you know if the proposal is to fill it in, can you replicate that and not um, harm? The wildlife that's living out there. So I w that's something that I'd like to also have us consider. Okay. The other thing that they mentioned because they were going to go over 5,000 square feet mm -hmm. and it's not a limited project is that they were going to go DP for a neighbor. So okay. um, I'm very curious as to how that process works between us and DP. I don't. The last time I think it happened was Route 18 where they you know, took all the wetlands they were um, taking away along the roadway and put a quality wetland over on the base, like it was like two times the size. 
but they worked with DEP. It's still, we still heard the notice of intent, and I think we commented, but I'd still like to understand that process a little better because that is just something that's coming up that mm -hmm. we're going to have to deal with. Because, and most waivers aren't approved, so okay. um, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Okay, I will look into that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? All right, we'll open it up to the public. Just state your name and address, please. When you get up there. Go right up there. Yeah. 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 I will, I just was looking at the map. I do apologize. Uh, John Madden, 84 Progress Street. I do have uh, several questions. I just would like to look at the for you. You can turn it if you want, so you can look at it while you're talking. Thank you. Now, is this the square, the, the, the whole zoning project? So, yes. And is this road here, the road that goes across that's that? That's the yeah. road. Okay, that's this corner. Okay. And, okay, and this is the part of the Right. And so, basically, anything in green that 100 feet, they cannot build on all oh, it's like you, you have to abide by you have on. to get special permission to um, fill it in and build on it and they're talking about filling in some of that one there but once they once they have a plan they'll have to come before us okay. in right and have they done an airhead study yet i know they've said they were going to or have they done that yet this board's focusing on okay. wetlands. Uh, that's, yeah, because that's Sorry. part of the um, wetland and EPA you thing. Said, you said ambulance? No, and ad. Oh, this oh is that's what this is. Yeah. So okay, so that's, uh, just to know, have they done their study? Have they made it public? Is that what that is? That's, that's what this is. Okay, that's what I was just confirming. Okay. That's okay. No, like, yeah, I might need one by the time I'm done here, but uh, I do apologize. So, no. so what's in green mm -hmm. is what they've delineated as wetland okay. on the site. Um, we want to. Uh, we're talking about hiring consultants to, uh, you know, verify. Well, if, we would, that would be a good idea to actually check the area out before we approve anything. I, I think that's um, beneficial to everybody. Um, the other thing I had, um, now the conservation board, now when they vote on it and if they do it, what bill does the 40B uh, project have to do on, I know on the zoning commission and the other commissions, I know they've been saying, well, there's not much we can do, our hands are tied, uh, we would like to help, but we have to follow the law, it's basically up to HUD. But I do know that they need your permission, your approval, your thanks. Now, I was wondering from your state, what does the 40B project do for you? Can they override anything you say? Can they do anything to avoid anything, you know, filling these wetlands if we find out that it is not beneficial to the town or the environment. Well, we, we have to follow the Wetland Protection Act, basically. Right. And okay, so there's no, so 40B cannot outweigh anything for the Wetland Protection Act? No. Yeah. No. Uh, not, not as far as our board is concerned. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, um, as for storm drainage and stuff like that, I know that this does have a slight downhill thing, because I know everybody here is basically, it does get flooded. Right. Um, and it continues, and I was wondering if they do disrupt that in the thing, how that's going to have an effect on us, and what do you have, you know, what, what how do you have all that? What they are required to do is put in a stormwater system that has no net runoff. So for the one year, two year, 10 year, and 100 year storm, they are not supposed to have more water running off the, the site than exists now. So the stormwater system will have to be reasonably sizable for this one because there's a lot of construction from the project I've seen. Mm -hmm. But hopefully, I'm sure, we will have a peer review of our, that's what mm -hmm. it's just Is that something that you would review as well? Or are you going to hire someone to do that as well? I think stormwater does come back eventually to conservation, yeah. okay. but right now it sits with planning, and I don't know what. Yeah, we have to find out if they're gonna. Uh, I think planning zoning boards they had brought it up. They had snow removal and right. with the flooding with that, but right. that was the only thing they discussed. They have not discussed anything about. Right, and those types topics. of things we would also discuss once it does get to us, because we would want to know exactly, you know, snow removal, what okay. types of chemicals you can't use. This da da da. That would all be outlined there. But also, like I said earlier. According to the zoning map here, that area in question is considered part of the floodplain and wetland protection area as well as the watershed protection area. That's right. Yeah, that's right. 
So, I mean, that in itself, as far as shedding water onto the people who live on Progress Street, you, you, you can't impact that. You should not be impacting that in any way. So that's where their storm water would come into play. And somebody will be inspecting that from the town, or from uh, the town, or the town somebody hires, and the committee itself, or typically they'll, um, the applicant will submit their stormwater plan mm -hmm. with their calculations, and then um, the town will have a peer reviewer, like planning has the stormwater board, and they'll have a peer reviewer, which is an independent um, consultant that they hire, and they'll review it, and, um, and then they'll work so. with the applicant to make it. Right. And is there a time frame or a timetable somewhat of when they plan on bringing this to you for you to vote or is this just still in the opening process of working? And we don't know. All we have in front of us is the MRAP. Oh, so yeah, that's all, all, that's all, we that's all we're voting on tonight is okay. nothing, nothing to do with construction. Okay. Right. And, uh, and if, does, I, know, I don't really think the zoning thing you guys um, you know, not direct correlation, but do you guys, you know, take into consideration things that are brought up that meeting that, you know, where your decision or anything towards that ways, or okay. is this something totally separate? Um, I'm just concerned about like some of the points that do have to do with wetlands and construction and environmental things that are, there's only things that are not, you know, you know, for you guys to be informed as well. That are public record. Well, I guess, I mean, if we if there's something that we find impactful to the wetlands and they might have to change design or vice sure. versa they might zoning might say they have to do something different then they have to come back before us okay. again so it's it's a long process yeah right i was just kind of figuring on you know what you know um you know with the 40b rules if there's you know i know they can make exceptions on building and construction and you know certain laws that they can get you know with, with even though it was you know not approved originally, and then now it's 40B. So I didn't know how impact that has on your board. That's my main question. Not, none. No. Okay. So you guys could basically say, hey, we're doing this. They can't go and say, well, the 40B says we can build wherever we want and do whatever we want. Basically, so that's I, not that's not I, possible. No, correct. no. I just wanted to clarify that. That's yep. all. Okay. Um, well, I probably will have more questions later, but thank you very much for, uh, you know, the opening meeting. Thank you. Thank you. I have, a que I have a question for you. You should have. Can you uh, give Tony your address? I have to. It's 8484. Uh, any more questions from the board? I have. Uh, oh, so I haven't brought it back to the board. Uh, right Nobody else from the board? Question. Yeah. I'll bring it back to the uh, board now. Okay. I just wanted to address your other question. I forgot your name, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Just about what information you could bring. I, I'm of the opinion that any, any information that could come from the public, the earlier the better. I don't live in this particular part of Abington, but if people have information about, well, this is how it's been for the past 20 years, or I've seen X, Y, or Z, or I've had these concerns, I think those are all good things to bring to us. Um, the people who live there know this area better than anybody. And I, I personally would like to hear from members of the town about their thoughts and experiences. <laughs> oh. now, now, does the wildlife that is not on the wetlands, does that concern you as well? Is that something that you guys deal with as well? I know nesting, you said nesting, I can show you pictures of nest all over the trees and that. Uh, squirrels, foxes, deer. Um, yeah. and especially rodent control is really a big concern of mine as well. I was speaking, speaking to exterminators and actually people that um, work on appliances and they have told me that, that there's been, for some reason, I don't know exactly why, but not in just my area, but Abington alone has been a lot of rodent activity, eating wires like the dishwashers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, now, this impact that we'll have going into our properties on Progress Street in the surrounding and summer streets. Now, is that something that's going to make an impact on you and your decision as well, something that you look into? In terms of wildlife, um, one of the reasons I'm, I want peer review done is because I want to verify that, you know, these are bordering vegetated mm -hmm. wetlands. Um, if you fill in bordering vegetated wetlands, that can be a spur for having a wildlife um, biologist come out and do a habitat survey. And even though, you know, a deer may not step 
may hang out in an upland, it's probably going to walk into a wetland area. Sure, sure. The so one of the concerns the of the Wetlands Protection Act is wildlife habitat. And if you have something that's preventing, um, I wouldn't say migration, right, but movement of wildlife, mm. that can ha um, be one of the indications where it is having a detrimental impact on wildlife. So that sort of thing, you know, if there's like fences that's preventing mm -hmm. movement, those are all things that we need to consider. But um, the reason I'm bringing this up in terms of peer review is because um, we don't know what's there and what, what there could be if they want to replicate, or something you like don't that. want to displace. Right, yeah. and you don't want, you know, if there was like, you know, stuff on that was on the environmental, you know, Endangered Species Act, something like that. That's something that we would want to know and have somebody come in and look at. Right. And independent someone, you know, someone right. can, then someone just doing like that. So and you know, there's other things like this was done in February, and you guys might have heard all the wood frogs starting to make their little peeps mm. and stuff. Yeah. So this is the time of year if you have a vernal pool is when you're going to start to notice these things. Right. And a wetland scientist would spot the eggs and everything else, the turtles, the salamanders mm. that would all be emerging. This time, of the yeah, year. there is a lot more water out there than there things, and um, and if you notice, especially in the swamp and stuff like that, there, oh, is, sure. there is. I mean, you can just look at my fence and just see puddle. Like, you see, if it's dry, but you can number just, progress for 84. 84. Where, are you on the the middle. Middle. Where are you on the map? Um, okay. So, one, two, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, so I'm right in this area here. Okay. Um, Mm. Yeah, because it's right here. It's wooded, I'm, and I know it's a lot of the vegetation here. I can, I can look. I know they said that they won't, you wouldn't be able to see the building. Right, but I know that has nothing to do with you guys. But I can see clearly, like here, the street lights here. Um, but there is a lot of activity. I do hear a lot of activity rustling, rustling up there. My dog notices. You can tell. You can see. You know, I do see more fox than anything else. Than anything, I do see the occasional deer. Uh, there are like, like I said, there is a very poor, a small area to put that much building in. There is a lot of wildlife that is out there that should be right there. Um, and the other thing is the roads and the other, you know, you know things that we're going to be coming down into the province here. So that's why I was hoping that you know, we would be protecting all those ones. But it does seem like there's a slope down naturally. So I talked to everybody based on this road and says there's a lot of flooding. And you can see the flooding that goes down into the street as well. Right. All right, any other questions from the public? All right, now I'll bring it back to the board. Any other questions? Oh, um, do we have permission to go out to the site or do we need to set up an appointment or? Um, I can find out. Okay. I can email you tomorrow. Yeah, that's fine. And um, you just want general permission to go out yeah. to the site? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it'll be fine, but let me, can I find out for you? Sure. I'd rather get in writing, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> get, up to, get up to the microphone and yep. <laughs> Um, if the board votes to get a peer reviewer, you're probably going to want to set up it. Well, we're going to have to probably, same thing, get proposals and yep. vote at the next meeting or whenever to mm -hmm. see who we're going to use. And should, yeah. you, should you vote tonight for the... Whether the, we're going to do it. Whether you're going right. to do it or not. Yeah, to get, get proposals sense. and the next meeting we can... We, you tell me, Jean, you, you, <laughs> you did it the last time. Is two weeks good enough to... I will do my best. If I need anything longer than that, we can that, continue it. Um, we might have to continue it because um, I, of the nine places I approached, I only got three responses. <laughs> so it was tough. Um, but yeah, I make a motion tonight that we um, look into hiring a peer reviewer. Okay. Uh, for SE0, oh, I'm sorry, for Ian Red for Zero Summer Street. Oh, it does? Okay. Do we have a DEP number? Yeah, we have one. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's DEP number SE zero eight four zero five five five. And were there any notes on that? No. Thank you. Mm -hmm. the next one, the next one. Mm -hmm.
zero five five five. Somebody got a second it? Oh, you already make the motion. I made a motion. Do I have a second for uh, to look into peer review or to hire a peer reviewer for SE 084 0555? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, you want to ask for continuance for? Uh, yes, please. Can we April continue to the next, we will be the next hearing? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just leave your email information with um, Tony, and sure. once we have one, someone want to make a motion for yep. continuing yeah. at GoddardLLC.com. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll Someone make a make motion to continue. Continue. Se zero eight four dash zero five five five. What date? For the April twelfth. We have a second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Sorry, Kathy. Okay. Thank, Thank, Thank you. 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 So, right. so the next um, hearing will be on April 4th. I mean, sorry, April 12th. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully we will take the consultant to go out and do a peer review with them. Right. Okay. Do they have a tech reviewer too, or are they doing that tonight too? They do the whole thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we need a wetlands or scientist for the peer review, but a wildlife biologist. Okay. Maybe we can get a combination of separate. Both. Oh, okay. Probably so. Jean, do you want to uh, take uh, up the task again? Sure. Right. Should we make Thank you, Jean? Thank you, Pardon? Down to a second. No, I don't. Okay. Do we need. Actually, I was thinking of asking Bob first. So, wildlife biologist would be a separate thing. If we have a wetland scientist peer review, it, it will depend on the company that we go to. Yeah. Some okay. will have wetland, will have a wildlife biologist, and some will. Okay. So, and if I can find an individual who can cover the scope, I will. That will be my objective: is to look for all inclusive, so we don't have or a company that has both. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next on the agenda is discussion on conservation fees. What happened on Central Street? Oh, we got approved. Why? We said an 18 month out, 18 month. All right, so I'm going to hand out, um, Jean printed these out. She's been in conversation with a couple of the surrounding towns as far as filing fees. And compared to what other towns charge and what we charge. Yeah, we're severely undercharging. <laughs> we're very low on the, uh, on the spectrum. Can I um, say something to start about the fees? Um, sure. Just to lay the sort of up the groundwork for the public and for Please. the people on the board. Um, there's two sets of fees. Um, we are DEP allows us to collect fees, and they have very specific fees um, in their regulations that we get no matter what. Um, years ago, we added the Abington filing fees, which we're allowed to do specifically. Back then, I think our intent was to try to pay for our, our admin at that point um, to try to make sure that we had enough money to do a few things. But I think at this point, I think the objective should be, in my opinion, to perhaps um, be able to hire an agent because I think we have so many sites in Abington and we are getting more and more complicated sites that it would be really good to have an agent one, to help us um, monitor what we've approved, but also to help us with the applications. In some cases, we still might need to go to peer review even if we have an agent, but I think that it would be really helpful. I mean, you know, the example which is later on the agenda is all the open orders and conditions that don't have certificates of compliance. That alone, besides projects that are ongoing that nobody's really monitoring because we're all, we all work full time. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. So, um, anyway, I just wanted to sort of lay the groundwork. 
and we put those fees together. The first time I was on conservation. You don't have to. You don't have to say when. <laughs> when my my oldest was that was when my oldest was born. So oh, it was a long time ago. <laughs> so, and we uh, we upgraded them probably five or ten years later. So they haven't been touched in years. So we are mm -hmm. really. Um, I think we've been collecting enough funds to support our admin, <laughs> Tony. But I think that um, we have the ability to collect more money and actually have mm -hmm. somebody representing our board. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you know, all the other boards have professionals representing them. The Board of Health has an agent and a nurse. The uh, planning board has, you know, us always got the peer reviewers. Zoning has the building inspector, and we have the True. And the board is pretty new, so I think in most towns helpful. have conservation agents. Yeah, yes. either right. Yeah. Uh, part, they, usually, a lot of them they're part time. They float between two adjoining or close towns, and that, I think that's all we really need, anyways. Which would be fine. And, yeah. You know, or some towns actually hire a consultant firm, like one of the bids you got from mm -hmm. LEC. Mm -hmm. A consultant will act as it, so you may get yep. different people, mm -hmm. but. Um, I think we need the support, and I think our filings are getting more complicated. They, sh they, they are. And one of the things I did do was reach out to a lot of local conservation commissions, and Holbrook, as a matter of fact, um, did exactly what you said. She's being funded by their fees, and she works part-time in Holbrook, and I believe she said she works part-time in another town. She does the administrative portion as well as the enforcement and everything else, the review. So. And our fees are severely oh. low. So, how low? Very low. Twenty what? Twenty five dollars, right? For, I for, think for, yeah. for and, right. And I think most of the average towns around us were a hundred to a hundred and fifty. So mm -hmm. we could we are losing a lot of yep. money. And yeah. We can and yep. when you start looking at things like. They also have penalty fees. No. Which is good. Right. And you start so, looking at, at places like we were just talking about, Sarah, Summer Street. Right. Over 200 units. Right. You know, they're getting thousands of dollars, which obviously somebody can do a good review and monitoring later. Right. So. I think Hanson had a clause at the end of theirs where they said um, if certain paperwork was not filed completely or whatever, there were actually penalty fees attached to. Which, you know, which would kind of make them want to do it right the first time out. So, so do you have a suggestion, Jean, of what, what we should model it after? Did you like one of them the best? Um, I actually gave them all to Paul to look at. I think the best thing to do is I'll give these to Tony, let her email them to everybody, then the next meeting okay. we can... Perhaps maybe we could put them on Excel sheets so we can see them comparative yeah. side by side and then make well, I our can... determination. I, I pulled a few other towns. Did you? Yeah, so I'm going to give those to you too, Paul. Excellent. What's that? I pulled a few other towns. I okay. I format of Norwells, but, um, you know, I think we probably want to talk about here. Huh? We probably want to think about the format, which is probably oh, okay. absolutely one specific format. Yep. <laughs> but I know Paul said something a while ago about certificate of compliances, which are making us crazy. <laughs> I have a whole I have a whole list. You have a whole list. Okay. Go, do you want to tell? Well, that's, that's further down the agenda. Oh, oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. Well, but for the filing fees, I mean, his question was, um, should we? Um, you know, every year someone has not filed their, for their certificate of compliance, do, do we charge them a fee? Um, and I thought that that was actually a really good thing. Right. I don't know that we can backtrack, but starting when we going these, forward. Going forward. Um, the other thing is once we decide on what the filing fees are, we will need to go to the Board of Selectmen to get approval. We have one of them here today. Oh, so we have one here today. <laughs> You've got your, your liaison here. <laughs> uh, so, Mr. Chairman, you, uh, Alex Haggerty, 515 Summer Street. Uh, Paul reached out to me. Um, so I, I spoke with uh, the town manager and also a review of the town charter to see uh, how you can adjust these fees or whose role it is. I'm huge on procedures. Uh, you know, whose role it is uh, to adjust the fees. Um, so according to the town charter um, chapter, I gave each of you one. Uh, 
It's on page four, uh, double-sided, try to save as much paper as we can. Uh, chapter 171, section six, call, uh, regulations, uh, part A. After public notice and public hearing, the commission shall uh, promulgate uh, rules and regulations reflective uh, to effectuate uh, the proposals of this bylaw effective when voted and filed with the town clerk. And then section B of 716, at minimum, these regulations shall be defined. Key terms in the bylaw, not inconsistent with the bylaw and procedures governing the amount and filing of fees. So in, in essence, uh, the Conservation Commission, you do uh, set these fees uh, for your uh, conservation permitting. Um, with uh, So the selectmen, you won't have to come back to the Board of Selectmen for approval. Um, there was some a little gray area because there was a couple of things in the building inspection where the building inspection uh, permits were approved by the Board of Selectmen. Um, this is completely different uh, with conservation. Uh, so with that being said, in order to uh, so hypothetically, you could not change the fees tonight. So what you'll have to do um, is post a uh, public hearing to specifically discuss uh, the review of uh, the permitting fees. Actually, I have the form right here. Uh, Town of Abington Conservation Commission Filing Fee Form. Um, and you, you are right. <sighs> April 23rd, 1991, but that, that predates me, so. Um, <laughs> um, no, so I, 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 applaud the, I applaud the commission for definitely looking into this, because, you know, when Paul and I were talking, looking at, like, and Gene, what you had sent him about, you know, 50 to, we're probably about 50 to 70 percent less than surrounding communities, and that's, we could use a conservation agent, absolutely. Um, and so we could definitely use with those funds. Um, so with that being said, to so what I would recommend um, would be uh, to post a public hearing uh, f to have a discussion on uh, updating or reviewing uh, conservation commission filing fee form. Um, I can make copies and t to and give each of you as well. Um, so, but that's that's the procedure. It's all in your hands. Uh, so, and I I have the utmost faith that you guys will do an excellent job. So, and thank you for looking into this as well. Um, definitely needed. Okay. So, thank keep you. up the great work, Alex. Thanks. Thank you, Alex. Any before we open up to the public, anybody else have anything to say? All right, I'll open up to the public. Bring it back to the board. Do we want to, um, like I said, do we want to put this on a spreadsheet and then discuss it at the next, continue it to the next meeting? And yeah, definitely. Yeah. Try and agree on on an updated fee schedule? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually, no, it wouldn't be a continuance. We're just going to, it's going to be a different. It'll be a discussion and a vote uh, on. I think, yeah, I think you want to just make it a make it a whole new right. whole new thing. Okay. Based on what Alex said, we want to make it a public yeah. hearing. Make sure it's posted yep. as a public hearing. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So do we need to put a separate notice out, or can we put it on our agenda, Alex? Separate notice. Separate it's a notice. Separate Thank notice. Thank you. Okay. Great. Tony, what's the? Isn't it? Forty-one days. Okay. Why? Right. But we're not continuing, so you can just. Post at whatever meeting that is. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the 21 days for? The hearing notice. The, oh, between the notice and the hearing? I believe so. I think it's really so we can't do it on the 12th. We'll yeah. We'll have to do it on the next one after that. Yep. Okay. Right, anything else about the fees? or? That last week of April. Oh. I won't be here for that. Let me see how long it takes me to make my spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the penalty fees. <laughs> Unless you want to move the meeting. Oh, we could have another I'd meeting on a different week. day. Yeah. Huh? I'd gone the entire week. The entire week. Okay. Yeah. Or six to so we can do it the following Tuesday. What's that? Maybe yeah. Why can't we do it the following Three weeks. Yeah. 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 Alex, what do you think? That, uh, She's going to be. Could we move the meeting on this fourth? Fourth week of April. Week, April to the week after, so that Lynn will be there. What's that? What we can wait till the 10th. Yeah. 
the tenth of, of May. May. You're saying? Yeah. Why don't we wait and see what happens at the on the twelfth? I mean, I have no problem even uh, moving that meeting, but let's yeah. see. Well, we have yeah. days. Right, right. So if we push yeah. it out, and she's well, we can always push that. I mean, we've waited yeah. 30, 31 years to update the files. What's an what's an extra we did. extra week? Yeah. Yeah. Now we're gonna get flooded with we're gonna get flooded with uh, yeah. NOIs now. I'll be here for the next year. <laughs> just get, get it done yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. So yeah. All right. So no further discussion on conservation fees. Uh, next on the agenda is discussion on open certificate of compliances. I know Tim uh, reached out to me last week. He's not here, so. We can discuss it, but I'd like to continue it till he's here to get his feedback on it. Um, okay. But back in the December, uh, November, I'm sorry. I started going through starting in 2018, uh, just seeing what was open because we were getting, a, you know, since I've been on the board, we were always getting somebody that's looking for a certificate of compliance for something that was filed back in. 2005, 2008, whatever it is. So it's kind of hard to see if the the work was done. You know, you know, it's no fault of really anybody because the homeowner doesn't realize that they have to do it because they have somebody come and get all the all the you know fill fill out the NOIs and everything. So just be nice if we could have an updated spreadsheet and basically. Once we approve something like tonight, the Central Street Bridge, we can have a file and say, okay, this is approved this day, or when the order of condition go conditions goes out, we have three years. And at that three years, if they haven't come in for a certificate of compliance, they have to come in and ask for an extension. I mean, there's, like I said, since 2018, what could, what should have been closed out, it's more than half of the NOIs are still open. And it's probably, if you go back, Oh, I, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to step down that that wormhole. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I think it's a consistent problem. Um, so I'm glad we're looking at it. I don't know quite how to approach it. Whether we send out letters to remind the more recent first and work our way down the list and. Maybe in a couple of years we'll get down to 2005 and 2006. <laughs> but uh, you know the problem is is that um, it doesn't happen until people do a real estate transfer. Right. Yeah, that's why. Can. So. Oh, you already have one. Yeah. Why did I waste my time doing that? Because you didn't ask me for it. <laughs> yeah. so, okay. So I, I think we really want to think about how to. Can you email that to every the, the board? Right. That that's really my. I agree. Yeah, I'm not sure how we're gonna how we approach people to comply. That looks a lot better than mine, by the way. Punish people? No, no I, I I don't think I want to find people. No, I, I anything. I just want no. them to comply and I mean, tell that's, them what they need to do. You know the. That's another thing. If we had a conservation agent, they could they'd be able to. That's one of the things that they could stay on top of. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. And you know, I guess. I think starting with the most recent and working our way back might be the way to do it. Yeah. I know. I think we're good for the next two months as far as what else is out of that three-year window. But um, Are we tracking the ones that we do currently now, like every NOI that comes before? You just showed him that? Is that what you were looking at? Okay. So, I mean, so we have when it was issued, where and they everything. are. Anorex, everything when it was issued. Okay. Is that good? Uh, okay. No. I have the date filed, the DEP numbers, uh, what type of filing, the applicant, site address, order of conditions, date of order of conditions, what is recorded. Enforcement orders. Violations. Okay. All the way to completion of COC. And they're only allowed and to go when it's recorded. And the yes, yes. registry is what she said. Too. Okay, good. So it's more than just good. getting our compliance, but actually recording it in the registry, which is good. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to keep that open for the next meeting. So if Tim has any questions, we can yeah. let I'm, him I'm, discuss. Yeah, I think I'm thinking maybe we try to draft a letter to send to these people, telling them, you know, to a group. Let's do a group at a yeah. time. Let's yeah. <laughs> we we don't want <laughs> 50 people. Like a form letter, <laughs> and you just fill in there. Yeah. Yeah. And you can tell them their SE. 
SE number and you know yeah. you have an outstanding it's COC it's expired it's you need to come before the board or mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions or somebody want to make a motion to continue that to the next meeting? I'll make a motion to continue that to the next meeting. I have a second? I'll second. Tw well, to the April 12th, 2022 meeting. I'll continue it to the April 12th, 2022 meeting. I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, I can't vote. <laughs> You can vote, we're just not going to count it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. It's like uh, a natural instinct. It is. Yeah. Next up is checklist for conservation documents. I don't either. Okay, so that would be me. That's you? Okay. <laughs> that would be me. The floor um, is yours. Okay. So one of the things I was doing when I was looking for peer reviews, I was reaching out to other conservation agents in the local area. I've spoke to Canton, Stoughton, Holbrook, Rockland. And just in discussions with them on certain things that are applied for through conservation, like you said, ANRADs and NOIs and all the other paperwork that we deal with, they actually have checklists so that when they come before Tony and they're sitting here looking, waiting for her to review, there's a checklist on top that the... That the we have one. We do. do we, on the website. Do we use it for everything? I, I might want to enhance it a bit because, I mean, there's all kinds of things. Like just with Mr., um, well, I don't want to mention, but we had an applicant that was just recently before us where the applicant filled it out, but the owner of the property was entirely different. Yes. Um, we do have the checklist, but usually I receive them from the representative of the applicants. So the representative usually goes through that stuff and the applicant doesn't sign anything. So usually I received them. I received one today. This one. Okay. Well, I think it's all about if the person since you know I'm not in my office twenty four seven. Okay. It's if I'm there, I can double check everything. Like today, I have an incomplete application sitting there because. Right, but I think that in addition to it being that we have one on the site, if we can enhance it a little bit more and just make it very required for them to do this before they even. Because, I mean, each consultant firm has their own way of submitting things, and I think if it's done in a more consistent manner, where they have to sign it at the bottom, and if it's not signed, oh well. Well, and the thing that, you know, I've seen over the years that is missing, you know, they'll do, they'll show us that they're going to do replication, they'll even tell us what percent, but they'll forget the replication plan, or mm -hmm. they won't have the wildlife habitat, or we won't get the stormwater. So I think the checklist would be, very useful to and make sure everything is complete. I, I actually understand. I think maybe we should take a look at what's on the website mm -hmm. and maybe at the yeah, next meeting and talk about how whether we want to update it or enhance it. Yeah. Right. And then knowing that Tony is going to look at the list, not just take what the applicant checked off. But Correct. That everything's complete, which just sounded like what you did today. So, right. Um, I think that that would be helpful so we don't waste the applicant's time or our time. Mm -hmm. And if um, some of the classes through Mac, they also said that the checklist can be helpful because we can be very specific in the detail that we want, mm -hmm. you know, so they will know in advance this is what we're looking for. So they won't be coming before the board to seek the information and go back. And I've seen things yeah. like, you know, yeah. we yeah. like the 15 foot yeah. buffer yeah. between right. the wetland and yeah. where the yeah. silk fence is, right. and we can put that on the checklist. That's right. But maybe we'll all just put that in our comments. Okay. That sounds good. And we're going to do it. I think we should start with the notice of intent, maybe. Yep. And then maybe talk about um, other things like request for determinations. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and rounds after that. Does that make sense? Yep. I want to make a motion to continue that to the next meeting. I'll make a motion to continue uh, the um, check off list or whatever you want to call it till the next meeting. We'll start with the, the April, NOIs. To April 12, 2022. To the April 12, 2022 meeting. Do I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, building permits and site visits. Uh, I signed a couple building permits today. Nothing of issue with the board. Uh, site visits. Russ and I did a walk last Tuesday to 500 Chestnut Street. 
Andrew Point sent an email, I believe, the week before about a complaint he received up there. So we went out last week. We met with the property owner and uh, representative from the engineering firm. Um, are you a you want to speak on it, Russ? No, well, just we all look, we look, they look like they're following the regulations and rules. <coughs> rules they were doing. So everything was up to pretty much up to code. Uh, erosion control was in compliance. I looked, there's nothing, no runoff going off the property. Uh, a lot of the areas, they still have a lot of work to do up there, but in the front of the property, uh, the, the drainage that they put in so far, a lot of the, the grass, the slopes are all stabilized. The grass has grown good. Um, I didn't see any issues. I sent Andrew an email basically stating that uh, today. And they still have a valid order of conditions? I, I'm going to check. 500 ch uh, chestnut. <coughs> Asking for an extension? <laughs> oh, there you go. All right, so they requested an extension. So they requested an extension. Did we approve it, Tony? Did it already get approved? Right. Yeah. So they haven't. They, they've requested it. Why didn't we hear it tonight? Because we recently got it. Oh. Okay. So it'll be on the next closed. meeting. Okay. And, and when does their order of conditions expire? <coughs> They can't be. They're not done. There's a big dirt pile there. Mm. I've never been up there. I've driven by. I will look into this. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Just want to make sure that they can actually extend it. Yeah. Well, I want to say it was like November 2019. Mm -hmm. Somewhere around there. Why not? The date instead the of the end of It's November, right? Yeah. Okay. Huh? <laughs> it's three, yeah, sorry. Okay. okay. That's good. You can see they're not going to be done. Mm -hmm. So if they ask for an extension, we'll only that like a year. It's like two we can do it. Okay. Three, one. Three, We'll discuss when they come before. Ah, it's up to us. And then uh, the other site walk was uh, done last Friday, 75 Dale Street. I mean, you guys have all the emails from the peer reviewer. Uh, Sebastian on that, so we, we can discuss that at the next meeting if they come before us since we continue that that hearing. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounded like it was going to have to be another sidewalk. Anyway, yeah, that's what that's what Bob's uh, Mr. Gray's email said. Um, I didn't see any meeting minutes to approve. Mm -hmm. Correspondence. We received the superseding order of condition for the address. SE 840550. 10 McHugh Circle. So you guys want to take a look at that? And then from the planning board, receive plans and documents for 657 Bedford Street. Can I ask a question? Why did we get superseding orders on Henry Q? I thought you guys approved it. Did D and I think I somebody think, I believe, appealed it. I believe in November somebody appealed it. Okay. Uh, one of the abutters. That's fine. There's concerns about drainage or something. Yeah. Just curious. And then, like I said, 657 Bedford Street, uh, the planning board gave us uh, some plans and documents. If you want to take a look at this. Here is 657 Bedford Street. <laughs> <laughs> be quicker than opening up the Google plan. Maps. <laughs> look at all the phones kind of <laughs> <laughs> You can get it fast. It's right ac across from Shaw Ave. 657. Oh, okay. Well, right on the corner, Shaw Ave, right by uh, the 
the Braintree Rehabilitation Hospital there on the corner. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I don't know if you guys want to. We always love paper. <laughs> <laughs> are there we should be conserving it. Are there all paper copies for all of us or just one? I didn't even open it yet. Just one? Okay. Oh, okay. All right, that's it. Uh, you want to do the order conditions for the bridge tonight? No. <laughs> I'm not ready to do an order of conditions, are you? No, I think we should do it at the, the next at the right. April twelfth meeting. That was one of the things that it the Jeannie and I attended the MACC yeah, twenty one days, isn't it? Training. Yeah. And they talked about how you can go into a lot more detail about orders of conditions right. at that training. So. Right. I'm sorry I missed that hearing, but there are very specific orders of conditions that we have to add yeah. that are actually in the regulations because it's an ecological restoration. So um, they, we, they may repeat some of what are in our generic, mm -hmm. but they have, they have actually listed them out because it is an ecological restoration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have no problem pushing it back to the twig. Yeah. Like I said, so. I usually make one up and I have it mock one up and I haven't done it yet so yeah. there's 10 pages of regulations on ecological restoration in the okay. facts did you read that no I'm sorry okay I'm going but one of the things that I did bring up so I want to make a motion to adjourn the rest of the stuff that happened to bring to go that's when we were closing we have a second and they said they I'll needed second. a 18 week all those in favor aye aye mm -hmm. adjourning <laughs> <laughs> I was talking. <laughs> <laughs>